everybody. It's really good to be back here in this uh, beautiful room, in this beautiful chambers. I was actually here a year ago giving a talk myself, and it was not nearly anywhere as well attended as this one. <laughs> so I think that means that our guest is very, very special. Uh, and it's great, my great pleasure to introduce a friend who we actually met over dim sum in Beijing. I yes. think it was 2009 or so, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, through our mutual friend Ed Gargan in Beijing. Um, he introduced you saying, uh, it's my only friend who's ever won an Academy Award. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so I get to say, it's really good to, uh, when I came here to HKU, to, uh, to, to be able to be on the same team with uh, Ruby Yang. Uh, who's, who is our uh, distinguished uh, professor, um, a, 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 a professor teaching documentary film. You know, I interview students coming to our program from Beijing and Shanghai and Guangzhou and all, over, all around the world, and I think about three quarters of them say, I want to come there because of Ruby Yang. So she has been the big draw. <laughs> and uh, she'll tell you more about her background. She's the, uh, the Hungling Haling Distinguished uh, Fellow for Humanities. She's also the uh, director of the uh, Li Hai San uh, docu Hong Kong Documentary Film Initiative. But uh, you know, most importantly, uh, she's really a mentor for a lot of students who come here. And she's gonna tell you about her remarkable journey that took her from Hong Kong to the US to 10 years in China and back to Hong Kong again. And we're just really lucky to have her here uh, tonight. We're very lucky at the JMSC to have her. So without further ado, Thank Ruby you. Yang. Thank you. It's really an uh, uh, honor to be uh, speaking here with actually a lot of colleagues and uh, friends and supporter and um, you know it's uh, well it's a full circle um, I was born in Hong Kong and I uh, went to the US and to China Beijing and then come back here uh, at Hong Kong U it's really a, a, a honor and pleasure to be here um, being uh, in the JMSC and also being able to um, get the fellowship and also um, started the Hong Kong Documentary Initiative, which uh, we can mentor a lot of uh, students who are interested in documentary and also, um, you know, the having the local uh, young people who are interested now in documentary filmmaking. So, um, actually, um, I would, you know, the, the journey really started um, in San Francisco. Um, um, I went to college in San Francisco back in the late 70s uh, studying art and painting and eventually studied filmmaking uh, without knowing that uh, I will be a filmmaker. I'm a really an accidental filmmaker and, and actually, actually really an accidental you know, advocacy filmmaker. Um, so I you know, in the late 70s, early um, 80s, there's this um, movement of um, Asian American who's um, just started, you know, from the uh, 60, the civil rights movement, and then it went to the 70s, where, you know, the Asian American really want to tell their own story and starting the movement of, you know, having the, the university uh, having started at San Francisco State saying that we demand to have Asian American history taught at this college because nobody knows the contribution of the Chinese American who built the railroad and the Japanese American who were interned um, during the Second World War and the Filipino and then of course later on the, the um, influx of um, Vietnamese refugees. So in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, it started with a couple of um, uh, visual communication and um, uh, uh, formerly the NATA, which is the National Telecommunication um, uh, Organization. We started to have um, television uh, series uh, or a documentary on public television on PBS and at that time was pretty much well funded by the um, corporation of public broadcasts. And that, you know, the idea is to bring uh, three-dimensional characters and, and, and knowing the diversity of uh, uh, Asian American, uh, that how they live and, and, you know, seeing, bringing into the TV uh, in the living room, which they feel kind of, you know, 
part of the family because, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, there's not much, you know, uh, role model. The, uh, there's no Asian faces on um, television. Well, we have Connie Chung, um, that about yeah. it. Um, so, it's just, you know, it's, you have to wind back 30, 30, 30, 40 years. It's now it's common, you know, you have the CEO, that Asi Asian American, Chinese American, but that time is none. And then there was the time, you know, Bruce Lee was a big deal. <laughs> Bruce Lee, you know, people say, wow, that's, we have a hero, you know, we have a hero image, you know, that kick ass, you know. So um, <laughs> that was really the beginning uh, of these, the movement. And I was very lucky. I, that time I just graduated from uh, San Francisco Art Institute. Um, I was able to be working with these organizations doing um, the editing documentary. And that introduced me to uh, these um, Chinese American history, which go into the Exclusion Act, which not, but not many people have heard about the Chinese Exclusion Act, which is, uh, started in the 1800s. Um, to stop uh, labor coming into the U.S. and uh, it's, it ended in 1943, which is the end of the Second World War. So I want to show actually, um, this is a film that I edited in New York, which is a four and a half hour series in three parts. The first part is the gold rush, the second part is about the Second World War, the third part is mod modern day, which is modern day is changing so fast that um, it's changing. But the history part is still relevant. I'm just going to show the first two minutes of the, the, the tales about the atrocity towards Chinese at that time. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a, really a story about um, the Chinese, the hero, the, how they uh, fought back throughout the um, decades or a year, hundred years of so this is the part that is the worst, and, and it's, it gets better. So um, it's a series by Bill Moyers. It's uh, actually um, being studied at uh, all the high school in the US when they take Chinese American history. It's, it's, it's there, and um, so, but I think that's what media, I'm talking about is media is powerful because you, you can, record the history and tell it in a way that people, the young people will learn what happened in the past and do something about it. I think that's how I, I start, I, I learn my, how I uh, was, you know, learn with my mentors in the U.S. how I think how media could be used in a powerful way. So, um, you know, fast forward, and I, you know, my, my brush up my skill being an editor, and then start to do my, my film, uh, my first film about Hong Kong, uh, it's called a Citizen Hong Kong, about uh, five young people, how they face their identity, and with the, my own background, and that's my first film, and was done 20 years ago, and will be shown on the 3rd of October here. Um, and if you're interested, please come to see the film. And and then you know it's it's always tough being um, Asian American, Chinese American in the U.S. So what I do is that I I did this uh, do uh, editing and then uh, work on my own film. You know you know switch between the two, and then I was fortunate also to be able to edit a few of them. Uh, Jung Chan's movie, which is uh, um, her two, uh, one Hollywood film and one uh, mainland Chinese film, Show Show, The Sundance Girl. Fortunately, that was banned in China, but it's, she's okay now. She's able to work in China. But so throughout the career, I was able to work on uh, many really quite good films. And, and that, you know, I thought, you know, I, I'm I arm myself with some skill, and in 2001, I was uh, with my colleague um, Thomas Lennon in uh, New York. He's a, uh, exec he's a producer on Becoming American. And that's how we know each other. And we, uh, I came upon a lot of news about HIV/AIDS in China, 
and I said, oh, maybe that's the time to go to China and do some advocacy work without knowing the difficulty. But, well, uh, actually my husband Lambert and I been into China uh, in, in the year 2000 and did a, a, a documentary and we thought, oh, we can do a documentary then, maybe we can uh, do a campaign in China, doing, you know, uh, HIV AIDS campaign in China. So, well, taking two years, two to three years of fundraising, we were fortunate to um, get um, to work on um, a public service announcement with NBA, with uh, Dr. David Ho, the AIDS uh, scientist, um, and with Yao Ming and Magic Johnson. And so that's opened a lot of doors for us because um, NBA at that time just went into China and uh, this is a very popular program. And uh, NBA China gave an gave airtime for us to air the, these uh, public service announcements for free, of course. And those are the airtime they can have, so they could have sold for a lot of money, but they gave it to um, the, these public service announcements. So we did uh, six of them, and plus a short, 15 minutes short, it was uh, air on uh, just China CCTV, Chinese television. On Later on it was air on, um, bus stops, train station, we have uh, partners, uh, UNAs, uh, uh, also um, a lot of, uh, also Chinese Ministry of Health partnering with them to, to uh, distribute these ads. But um, then, you know, after we raise funds and um, we have to move to, pack up bags and move to China in 2004, and basically uh, start from scratch, you know, uh, recruiting young people. And we was very lucky, uh, I think actually um, 2003 was the SARS epidemics. And that was a very good time because um, at that time, uh, uh, public health was very uh, main issues. And then um, at that, uh, also Bill Clinton, uh, President Bill Clinton went in and uh, and uh, spoke to uh, Wen Jiabo, and uh, he was pushing the Clinton Foundation uh, about uh, how to kind of um, disseminating knowledge about HIV/AIDS and uh, discrimination. And in in fact, he at um, conference he uh, took upon himself and shook hand with a uh, HIV/AIDS positive young person and that was broke the ice and then then later on all the uh, minister has to shake hand with the young person and that was the really the, the you know breaking point and then um, we were lucky then we got funding from AIG Star Foundation at that time it was pretty funny they gave a stop and a couple years later it was pretty much one dollar. <laughs> And, and well, luckily enough, my, at that time, Tom was smart enough to cash all the stock for us. <laughs> so we, we were like, have, have money to start our, um, our, sort of our, we couldn't be an NGO in China because we cannot register as an NGO. So we basically start as a sort of, uh, we don't know we, how we call it, we call ourselves China AIDS Media Project. It turned out that we couldn't call ourselves China AIDS Media Project because only yeah. government uh, official can use China. So we didn't know. So it was a lot of um, trial and errors. And, and we started to recruit a lot of young people in, in, in China. They are all fresh graduate and they, they was very, really good. They, they love to do something on HIV AIDS without any problem at all. So we have a group of about 10, 15 people starting. Basically, this is fresh graduate uh, from Shantou University. At that time, it was actually Ying Chen was the yeah. dean. And she actually referred a couple of uh, uh, her students uh, to me. And they all speak Cantonese because my Mandarin wasn't that good. So that's how we started. And um, maybe we can go into, uh, at the beginning it was China AIDS Media Project. We found out we can use the word. So we'll call it Chang'ai, which is advocating 
uh, care and love, and it's very uh, politically correct in China to call that name. <laughs> so we, we did a, a bunch of public service announcements, and uh, we eventually got a couple of funding from even Gates Foundation gave us uh, two uh, funding, and we did uh, three campaign, uh, and one with a, a UNICEF, that, uh, with uh, Miss Pang Lai Yuan. At that time, she was a famous singer. Uh, I didn't know, wh when she was introduced to me, I didn't know who she was. <laughs> and, and I said, like, well, okay, she was famous, mm -hmm. and she's a very good singer. And so, for, uh, and then she was just appointed as ambassador. I said, sure, let's go to this um, uh, Anhui village and where um, uh, we shot the, um, the Blood of Ninja District, which is which is the film that got the Oscar. And, but, you know, we, we were just doing, besides this film, we did about uh, five different short films for uh, CCTV. And uh, being ignorant is good, naive, because we said, well, why, I told my, um, all my young um, colleagues, I said, well, why can't we try CCTV? What's, what's the <laughs> deal, right? So, you know, they tried and it turned out to be okay, you know, because that time I was very lucky, it was before the Olympics and they were willing to do a lot of public service announcement, which I, HIV AIDS was okay. And so they aired these public service announcements uh, with the cooperation of Ministry of Health free and we uh, did um, these uh, short films we uh, gave to uh, a lot of provincial stations, which they need programming. So we have a team of, um, uh, dis you know, doing distribution, uh, actually two people, and doing a lot of these short films and provide them to the to the station free of charge. And the thing is that we we because we're doing awareness campaign, we don't talk about politics. It's it's okay, and and it's like we have to work in a localize our our stuff and we can we know our limitation but the thing is that we're doing humanitarian work not doing pushing for political work so I guess you know I'm pushing <coughs> the envelope and I know where my limits yes really was so I want to show you this uh, PSA and, and this young um, boy he, he uh, is in uh, the blood of Yingzhou Joe district and at that time was really, you know, uh, Minister of Health was saying, oh, we have this PSA and, and do you want to do it? And, and it's with UNICEF. I said, sure. And then we, I was introduced to Ms. Pang and then we wrote the square. And then, you know, mm -hmm. two weeks was in Anhui and then we started filming and we did three PSA and we did it in two days. In in U.S., in Hong Kong, we wouldn't be doing that because the kids were working. I mean, they're not working. They were, mm -hmm. they didn't, they were, they were there from eight to about eight. Yeah. You know, no, <laughs> and and they were just extra and kids. So you know, and and well, but they were having fun anyway. Um, so I'll show you this one, and it was um, it was aired on um, CCTV for about three thousand times. Uh, don't know why, but it, it, you, you can watch it and uh, see why. <laughs> in, in China, you know, sharing milk with an HIV person is really a taboo. And for in the um, NBA um, PSA, they were sharing meals together. It's, it's so important because many people will refuse to have a meal with them. So this idea is having the um, the uh, you know the mother uh, having meals and feeding the kids jiaozi the dumpling is is so important. It's a simple message, and I think in thirty seconds you just tell a very simple message, and and so it the 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 PSA was shown and and because we we're cooperating with the Ministry of of health and they distribute them PSA. So um, that was the, uh, um, it was, we, we was really, I'm really so surprised at the result. So um, 
I'm going to. I'm not going to show you the trailer of the Blood of Ningjiao District. I'm going to show you the revisit. Um, so the film was done um, in 2004 and 2005, and uh, so a lot of ha has happened because the the award really um, did shine a light to the HIV <coughs> positive uh, kid the issues. Um, I think that's what really uh, powerful uh, is not about getting the you know the, the big award Oscar, but because it's being recognized in in outside of China, so people t take a lot of attention about these uh, yeah uh, you know children with HIV AIDS and also the issues. And ten years later, so much has changed. Oh, I want to show you. You know, the film ten years later. Um, so it's just a, you know, um, Nanan is she's you know thanks to science she's you know a able to have babies and the baby uh, and the, her baby daughter is very healthy. And I think these, well, it's been two years ago, and I just recently uh, met with um, Zhang Ying, the uh, uh, NGO lady, and she told me that Gou Jun, the boy, he wants to paint now. He's an artist. So, you know, and, and so she's buying paints and for, for him to paint. And it's amazing how the internet works. And he said, he looked at these painting on the internet, and he was, and she showed me a picture of the paint. His painting is beautiful. So it was like two years, and he was he wanted to be a pilot for a while, and now he wants to be an artist. <laughs> so things have changed. And then I think the, the the boys he graduated already, and so they they lead a very normal life. And so just I think a lot of things can change, and I with proper campaign, media campaign with certain area like public health, uh, it can make an impact. Not all, of course, not everything could, could do be an impact, but HIV AIDS, everyone wants to have no, no disease and public health, and it's an issue that no people want to uh, work on. So, um, so at that time, we, we've, you know, we didn't know, uh, you know what we, to get out of in China, and and that that what we we uh, that we moved to China in two thousand four, and in about four years we did uh, all these series and did short film on on CCTV and provincial station, and then after the uh, award Oscar, I I want to move on to uh, pollution and other public health issues. So um, at that time, I didn't have to uh, take three years to get funding. I was uh, offer uh, some funding. So um, and and that uh, well, through an NGO in the U.S., we were introduced to a, a place in Anhui. Unfortunately, it's always Anhui. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, so uh, t uh, you know, things happen in Anhui, and because I think people are very little more open. Because in Henan, where the blood, uh, uh, you know, transfusion happened, and it was still very, very um, tight with uh, media, you can't even go in. In Hawaii, it's is a little bit open. So um, I want to show this trailer, and um, we were very fortunate to um, get uh, to this one village where um, just the actually got polluted by this factory for the past 10 years. And they had reports, a uh, report is going in, but nobody stick around. We, we stuck, uh, stick around for three years. And, and we waited until the factory closed down and the film was finished. It started in 2007 and we finished the film in 2010. So um, it's about one village. They fight about having clean water. And, and citizen participation. That was very new then in, in China. Nobody can talk about it now pretty much. But then we can talk about, I mean, 
we were able to shoot this this fun village. So the trailer. Um, actually, um, it's also a very hopeful ending. It, it's just it, it the the villager. He's actually he only have a. Uh, Study up to grade nine, but he studied law. He studied. He empowered himself by the, all the laws, and he negotiated with the local bamboo um, uh, minister of uh, environmental ministry. And for three years, he fought and fought. But of course, we couldn't be there all the time, and we couldn't be there for the riot, for the you know, protest. And, but he was able to let us into his home and do a very intimate portrait of one person, one, you know, and uh, being the leader of the village and how to, you know, in a way organize and negotiation. Actually, it's, it's a no get, negotiation more than, there's no violence, it's negotiation. And then um, the factory actually closed at the end and also it was very lucky because it was before the Olympics and uh, you know they, they have to clean up everything and it was in also a lot of the local press were reporting on this one place and this is not the worst place in, in, in China it's actually pretty moderate pollution so that's why I think our team can go in and film because it's not in Honan it's not in the worst polluted area in in uh, White River. Um, so the film got uh, very fortunate for us. I got nominated in 2000, 2011. Then there was uh, pretty much a lot, of, quite a bit of press. And I heard that immediately the whole bamboo government had to be ready for the army of press coming in. It turned out that only a few people report when to report. And, but then also we give pressure to the local government and they clean up the entire uh, the, the, the region, the, the little stream that got polluted, where the villagers draw the water for the, for the vegetable. And the, the, they built also uh, an industrial park where they can control all the, uh, all the uh, our pollution. And then they clean up the whole whole area where the the village got uh, polluted, and it, it's like this is like unimaginable what can be done. You know, the, the the local government did all this stuff because they were so afraid of bad press, and and um, so the villager actually uh, he was uh, he was so smart. He was actually the supervisor for the for to go into the factory to supervise whether they, they in fact they are not polluting they not um, it's like the right amount is being uh, disposed and then he actually still very active he was appointed the supervisor for the village and but then he wasn't allowed to go outside of his own village to uh, when we showed the film he, he did came came out, he didn't come out, and but then afterwards he wasn't allowed to come out to speak uh, as a spokesperson anymore, but and, and but at least he was not, didn't get into trouble, uh, no, he wasn't prosecuted, prosecuted by the uh, local uh, official, but and he was actually a hero, and um, I, I later on I told, I was told that they, because the film was, uh, we, uh, we made the film in association with the Yale uh, uh, Melbourne Toll uh, 360 website, and it was on their website, and someone find it. Mm -hmm. And they were um, so afraid that they cannot see the film, because I, I can't go in and show the film. And they left the uh, computer on all the time so that they were able, they, they can see the film. And, and it's then after probably two or three months later, and then the link was blocked. So uh, anyway, um, so I have to fast forward. Uh, fast forward to 2013, and I was very lucky to be invited um, by Ying Chen to come to Hong Kong U and actually eventually got the fellowship to be here. And um, 
actually China was the pollution, uh, the air was getting too bad in Beijing. I said, I told Ying, please get me out of there. <laughs> or I will go back to the US. <laughs> so um, it, was, um, it was so nice to be um, here in Hong Kong. And um, the L plus H Foundation, the Lee Heisen Foundation, actually funded the My Voice, My Life. It's about um, a group of young people um, that they um, uh, did a musical. Uh, the four school combined and did a musical. Uh, one is the visual impaired school. The three other school are band three students. Band three students, uh, so they are being uh, sort of labeled as not being able to study well. Uh, they fail at school, and and so and and so, uh, the idea is to sort of using that musical to see whether they can accomplish something in mm -hmm. during the couple of months, whether they can uh, transform themselves or using uh, the mentorship to make the change their life a little bit, uh, attention span, you know, uh, communication, collaboration. So I was invited to uh, do a film about uh, the uh, My Voice, My Life, and very lucky you see well, Hong Kong, you got, got uh, did the premiere, and it was um, a benefit uh, for Hong Kong. You so I want that's the last thing I'm going to show. It's um, a trailer of um, My Voice, My Life. Sorry, it's a trailer, it's a self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> very, very embarrassing. Um, so, you know, coming back here, um, and, you know, we were fortunate to get uh, Lee Heisen Grant to start a Hong Kong documentary initiative. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching a class at, uh, at JMSC. And um, this has been our second year. Next year is our third year. We, the initiative provide master class, seek grant to young uh, filmmakers, and also we have screenings and uh, Oscar winners coming to have lectures and workshop. And so uh, next year will be our last year for funding and we hope to continue this, this uh, program because it's really wonderful because uh, I think the the caliber of the master coming here to really uh, build capacity for local, uh, uh, whether it's documentary or filmmaking, it, it is great. And we have also um, filmmakers from uh, of around the world that uh, they come to show their film at the uh, Hong Kong Film Festival, and they will come here to have in depth sharing. Uh, we usually invite six to eight people, filmmaker, to uh, uh, to share their, their how they make films, their thought process, and and their experience. So we do did that two years, and then we have screening and also the um, mentorship. Um, I, I think it's so important to build capacity. And now we have JMSC student coming to film and. My workshop is open. Basically, anyone who walks in, I said, "Well, come in. Uh, you can, you know, if you have editing skill, you have Photoshop skill, come and 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 be part of you know this team." So, we probably have thirty young people coming in, aged from fourteen years old to twenty-two, twenty-three, and and intern with us and editing, and uh, I have projects they can and help with doing all kinds of stuff. Basically, uh, they need to have editing skill, filming skill, and Photoshop skill, and uh, After Effects. And so, most young people now know those, uh, those skills. And, and then um, we have also, you know, with teaching, I have, uh, last year we, we have the capstone project, and with our uh, projects, we, we have about 16 films yeah. done. And in 17. 17th, okay. And then just um, today, I guess last night, I uh, went to the Sundance, Hong Kong Sundance Film Festival. 
two of our one is from the C Grant got um, he got an honorable mention, and then uh, three students, MJ student, master student, also uh, uh, you know got the honorable mention. So f out of the five five of them, we got two from Hong Kong. So that's the first. So um, I, I think um, that's all I have to um, you know say for now. <laughs> Great, thank you, Ruby. That was just a fantastic presentation. We're really glad that your journey brought you back home um, after all these years away, and we're glad you came here to find your voice. Uh, we look forward to you uh, being with us at JMSC and at Hong Kong U for a long time to come, so you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to let you out of here, so please stay with us. You're, I know the audience has a lot of questions. I've got a couple of two. Explain one thing to me. I'm wondering. Um, as a journalist, I'm wondering, do you see yourself as a journalist or do you see yourself as an activist or an advocate? Or how do you blend those two when you're making the film? I see myself as a filmmaker, a storyteller. Um, but I, I do have the eth I do have the ethical question. I mean, ethics has to be uh, like a journalist. Um, nothing in the film um, on stage. Everything is as it happened. But in, of course, in editing, you, you try to tell a more the best story. So, but nothing, you know, they just say whatever, you know, they, on their mind, of course, I have to ask the questions. Um, in, in, in China, it's very, I mean, it's, it's good and bad. It's, um, it's very hard to gain the trust. You have to really build trust with them. And with the case of the uh, villager, and he asked to see the film, finished film, and he actually asked me to remove two scenes, which is the most powerful scene. I said, um, no. Um, in fact, at the end, he was, that was the most best film, best scene in the films, and, and I'm glad that I didn't remove those scenes. Um, so he constantly has to negotiate with, with your subject. Just to continue that, though, the, you're, it's so important to get the characters who are going to be able to carry the film the whole way through. Do you ever have any trouble? What if your characters are boring? Or what if your characters <laughs> drop out midway through? How do you handle that? <laughs> well, I, I do have people drop out, but you know, you have to be you have to be very persistent. You have to convince them this is a, a film, and you have to always you have to have. Uh, your assistant or your uh, field producer have to be very good, you know. And in China, you have to have a uh, young man who has a uh, university degree because then they they think that it's very good because there's something they look in uh, trust. Um, you know, you just have to feel the situation. Um, and in terms of uh, in uh, the Belonging Zhou District, I work with the the lady, and um, she was very very difficult but we have very good introduction from the St. Wild University and and that was the a good introduction is very important um, but I did have a, a, I suffered a lot from getting an award and, and it was a long story but anyway but uh, you do the trust part is the most important thing in making a documentary and you know, you know already, or do you, how do you discern what the red lines are when you're working, especially in, in China? How do you know what line you're allowed to go up to and cross? <laughs> well, we, the film that I made is all humanitarian. It's like public health. It's, you know, you know in the environmental film, is what happened. You know, it's something that, you know, the law uh, uh, are there, but then you know the local people didn't uh, oblige the law, and I think it's easier to be away from the center, from away from Beijing. Uh, you, you you go as further away, it's easier. Um, I think it's now very quite difficult now. I mean, I was lucky to go in er, like two ten years ago, and I think. I will be in deep trouble if I make those films today. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I seem I seem to recall when you were nominated for the second Oscar for the Warriors of Qigong, they they mentioned you in the Chinese media, but they never actually mentioned the name of the film. Is that correct? <laughs> actually, in uh, it's very interesting. In in when I the the, the Blood in Joe District, the Chinese media CCTV actually in a 
media. They don't have a winner in that category. They omit the <laughs> winner. Um, and then CCTV, I was so innocent. I said, well, we have to show this film. And then they, they did show clips of the film, but they refused to show the entire film. And then um, the, the, it's very mixed, though. Uh, the English press, uh, Chinese English press did you know, mm -hmm. uh, report, and part of its more open mm -hmm. media like in Shanghai, they did report uh, the the Oscar, and then the <laughs> state media didn't, and then Chou Gong was the same. But the, um, also, the, uh, China actually China Daily uh, report the the film, mm -hmm. and it's mixed. I mean, I I didn't cross the line because I didn't say the central government. Mm -hmm. um, the central government, government did have the law mm -hmm. is that you know the local people, mm -hmm. local um, you know and provincial, they didn't oblige and right. so you know there's this very you know you push the envelope to some point but yeah. you cannot cross certain lines. Sure and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask I was so touched watching the Becoming American that was 15 years ago but now today we see a travel ban in the United States we see a, you know, a, a policy now to reduce the number of refugees coming in. I mean, do you see any parallels? Yeah, I mean, I think this film is, the series is so important. And actually, recently, um, Cam did a, another exclusion uh, law film. I think it's so important to talk about that right now in, in the U.S. And it's timeless. I mean, the history is, uh, is still there. And um, I, I really urge it actually, uh, Hong Kong, you show this series, uh, especially the first two. Mm -hmm. The Gold Rush, a lot of people don't know about the, the mm -hmm. Chinese contribution. Mm -hmm. They built a railroad. And the second part, when the, a lot of Chinese Americans fought in the Second World War, and they were decorated heroes. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, that's so important in the in in the history, and, and then of course the, the third one is after the the sixty five, where you know Lyndon Johnson have opened the floodgate for uh, the immigrants who come in with uh, uh, blood relatives, and and but then now uh, Trump is trying to stop that. So <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this uh, this series should be study. Sure. And by the way, what is the status now of Asian American filmmakers and Hong Kong filmmakers? Where do you, where do you see it now? When you made that movie, when that came out 15 years ago, it was very undeveloped. What now? Oh, there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, th actually now you see a lot more Asian American actors on mainstream and on t television because mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of people mm -hmm. now really fighting back. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think what happened is a couple of years ago, the Oscar did the, you know, the uh, racist thing, and mm -hmm. we, uh, the, the member, wrote back and said, "Well, you cannot do that." And so they, they immediately like uh, try to get a lot of um, Asian uh, into the academy membership, and I think that you know, uh, used to be Asian American don't speak out and it's very afraid, but nowadays no. I mean, they just go out and, and, and protest and speak and, and really organize. And I think it's, it's a different, very different from when uh, Lamar and I went to school in the US and you have CEO that, you know, are, uh, you know, are Asian American. And in terms of Hong Kong, I think now is the time to do documentary. There's so much subject matter, you know documenting your com the changing in the community the the also the uh, political scene I mean we need a uh, very uh, really objective view not just one side of view you have to be I think objective you've included all sides and and uh, besides being critical you have to be objective mm -hmm. the and thing is the, is the time now to do docs Right, and before I get the audience question, one last thing. Where, where, where is the Oscar statuette? I <laughs> <laughs> um, store it in my home. But I, I think that one of these days, actually, I once in a while bring in the statuettes, and, and people can come and Can we have show and tell at JMS? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, I'm thinking about fundraising. 
event that I bring those statues, and then whoever donate to JNSC, then they get to take a picture <laughs> with the Oscar. Actually, the big secret is if you go to Hollywood during the Academy Awards, if you're carrying one of the statues, you can go into any party. So yes. I want to borrow it from Ruby. <laughs> you cannot. I mean, there are gods at the door. Oh, <laughs> Who's got questions? I know some. I know. I know all the JMSC students will have because they're JMSC students, but let's take some others first. Who's got questions for Ruby on any of these really interesting topics? Or are you all still mulling it all over? Yes? Well, um, Keith, yeah. Um, I'm very interested. I was about to say the same thing. I was saying about the red line. Where's the red line? Would you like to, to expand on, on the red line? I mean, it is very difficult. I'm a foreign correspondent for 20 something years. I, I, I really, we know that the pressure is really on to, to, to in Hong Kong journalists to, to you know, slow down the substance of everyone. So if anyone go to China, it's going to be very, very tough. Look, okay, you're a documentary filmmaker. It's, it's getting tougher and tougher, as you said earlier. Could you just expand a little bit what you said earlier? Everybody tell works. us what it's like to have to go and tell the truth, try to tell the truth, mm -hmm. the, truth right. the limitation. Good you question. Said about local government. Well, in 2004, 2004, it's, well, when we, when it is, a, we, it, it's an open uh, time, but up to 2009 was then because it was an Olympic time, so it's really easier. And then starting in 2010, they begin to tighten up. Well, being a Chinese, have a Chinese face help because you, people can, you, you know, you can go into a village and, and at least the first 10 minutes you can get away. <laughs> but once you begin to ask questions and stuff, then, then the whole crowd come together. I think working with local people, uh, smart uh, local field producer, um, and it will, it will help, but it's very tough now because uh, the last film I you know, I went in to do some at the pollution site. Uh, I was, our car was being followed. And so we, we stopped uh, filming because I, I didn't want to get into invite to a dinner and lunch and stuff. So, I, you know, we decided to move on. I think it's very tough uh, because, you know, the, your phone might be tapped, you know, and now you have to show your ID when you check into the hotel. You know, some journalists will go in, in at middle of the night so that, you know, hopefully that they would not put into the police station. All this stuff, you, you just have to be very smart. Uh, you know, just, uh, just being, you know, very, really aware. And if you don't, don't push. Really, if you don't, if you think you cannot film, then don't film. Don't try to, you know, get a fight. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's what happened. And I think that recently, there's a couple of filmmakers went in also, you know, by herself, and uh, she's um, Chinese. She has a Chinese um, ID, and she was able to film by herself and with hidden camera and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's still possible, but I think that whole uh, that. It's getting very narrow right now. But just to follow up on that, because I'm, I'm used to traveling in with a notebook and a pen, and, uh, but you, you have to go in with some kind of a team and some kind of equipment. How, how small can you go? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, you can just have a steel camera uh -huh. and, and, you know, some... The sound is... When you, if you want to have good quality documentary, you have the good sound. So you put a good mic, but then that might really attract attention. And you can put it in a separate mic, put it in your pocket. Um, it's possible. But I think it's easier, much easier for for a local person to go in to to film. You just have to ask the local person who will be your collaborator and do that stuff. And I think it's it's almost impossible now for any uh, non-Chinese citizen to go in and film. I mean, there used to be a red, you know, when red line when. I, we went in, it's like, you don't talk about the main, uh, the central government, but now I think people are getting so smart. And also with WeChat, mm -hmm. you know, s things have changed. You know, immediately, 
your your picture taken and then immediately it will go viral. And so it's really hard. Who else wants to take it, please? Uh, I have two questions. Um, it's more about Hong Kong. Um, one is uh, about advocacy media and movies and so on. Uh, the problem now is the attention span is so uh, small. How are you going to engage uh, uh, the audience uh, who is going to uh, listen to your whole story? Uh, the second is uh, really about the platform, how you can distribute uh, your story. I'm actually, it's a very good question. I think that you have to do short films. And the shorter the better. One minute. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> uh, one minute also, and also and you the YouTube and I I I'm trying to figure that out too. I think that there are people who have followers. You know, you have to engage those people. KOL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think it's hard because it's, you you have to get eyeballs. It's so hard to get eyeballs right now. And, and how do you do it? And you have to mount a campaign almost. How do you mount a campaign? It, it's costly. So in a way that you have to get these mong hong governments, like the, 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 you know, all these celebrity, the web celebrity to really help you out and you can to have to engage them. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I think uh, well, that's I, I, I think that I'm facing the same problems. Like, how do you, how do you distribute? What's your platform? Mm -hmm. It's right now. It's, of course, internet. Mm -hmm. Internet is the way to go. A lot of competition, Brian. Uh, who are the uh, most exciting new documentarians you've seen coming out of China these recent years? <laughs> Zhao Liang. Uh, his his film is wonderful. He many years ago he did a film called Petition, it was uh, three hours long. He just recently did a beautiful film, um, uh, Behemoth. It's a beautiful film and it, uh, it's just visuals and you just you let the audience think about the images. And I think uh, Joe Hao, uh, he did Mayor, and it's very, he's, he's also, he talked about being pushing the envelope to cross the red line. He's very smart. He was, used to be a journalist. And he was able to do a lot of films that nobody can do. He, he, he spent time with the, the mayor of Daitong. And it actually, it was a commission film. And then he <coughs> ended up making a film about the mayor. And then you can see the working, inner working of the bureaucracy. And, and then you can read into a lot of details that, that you know, you, both ways. The, the Chinese think that is a propaganda film, but the outside of China thinks it's, it's not so simple. So, I mean, you really have to be really smart as a, a now documentarian in China, and you have to, it's easier, really easier for being a mainland Chinese filmmaker. Do we have one final question here, Tampton, and then the dean? <laughs> My question sort of piggybacks off of the idea of distribution, but I'm more interested in the content and the advocacy part of the content and how you make it land. You mentioned examples where you work with Man Magic Johnson or you use SARS. I'm wondering in today's landscape, um, do young people like myself need to pick, find celebrities or topics that are really hot, or can we, you know, uh, create content that still speaks to something that we think is important but maybe isn't as sexy? What works in China? Well, I, at one point I was trying to uh, have things, game makers, game, doing game. People love games, like video games, and, and the migrant worker love playing uh, video games, and I was, was thinking about engaging them because they are risk, uh, risk group for uh, HIV AIDS and sexual disease and using some sort of uh, like a game to tell them a safe sex and that kind of stuff. So I mean you just have to be creative and what's I think the the powerful platform right now is, is I think is video game, it's games and, and just maybe people can think about a message and going you know 
so they call product placement. We call advocate placement. <laughs> Smart, smartly put it. Gamification. And last question, Will. Um, you said that it's really important to maintain some objectivity uh, in, in the film. But you're working with these incredibly emotional uh, topics and obviously have very, you know, really entwined yourself in these people's lives. So how do you maintain that detachment? It's tough, I think. It's tough for, for me for the uh, HIV AIDS film because there was time when we just landed in China. Immediately, I was like three months later, or actually two months later, I was landed in this HIV village. I was like, you know, how can I keep myself calm and, and doing the film? And I was, you know, I just have to focus on uh, behind the camera. What sometimes with a camera, you can stay up objective because your job is to film you have to and, and that's your job and I think that's what um, keep me sane and I think for editing I usually don't usually uh, edit right away and I need some time to digest the footage and I will have the first cut would be done by someone else so that they with a different pair of eyes they can you know see something that I'm too close to, 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 uh, to the subject, I'm too close to the material. So that's always good to collaborate with people, maybe totally unfamiliar with the, the, the subject matter. And I think that's helped a lot. Yeah. Well, great, well, I would like to let, have everybody please stay in your seats for one minute and help me with two things. First of all, to say thank you to Ruby Yang for this really engaging presentation. Thank you. And for the second thing, I'm going to relinquish the microphone to my friend Bernadette here. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we'll have a little epilogue in which you'll be involved. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Ruby and, and Keith. And I think, I know you have a lot of questions, but that's why she has a documentary program. So <laughs> this is only a fireside chat. So um, thank you for um, talking about pushing the envelope. And also the envelope is not just uh, censorship, but it's also how do you get people's attention when there's so much going on and how do you really push it across and I realize that the films really have great music. I think one of the things is the music and the camera. Now, apart from that, um, you may notice that Ruby is our Hong Leung Hao Ling Distinguished Fellow in Humanities. In case you don't know, Hong Leung Hao Ling is the wife of Hong Heng Ying. You know, the <laughs> and um, after, we've sh after we uh, uh, planned this fireside chat, we realized it's Belinda's birthday. So, you didn't realize it's your birthday. <laughs> so we do have a little cake to share. So let's stay for a, for a nice photo and a, and a little cake. A little cake you can share. <laughs>